Hi YouTube and PEX Universe family. Today we're going to be discussing the Joyce Track heat transfer plate and why it's an efficient choice for your home's heating system. On a previous video that we did some time ago, our old host compared both the standard heat transfer plate that you see right here versus the Joyce Track. Now, when he spoke about the Joyce Track briefly, he mentioned that he didn't like it because first, it's cost versus the small, thinner aluminum kind, and also that there was a loss of heat because the PEX or the copper tubing that you would install would be exposed from the bottom when snapping it into place. After speaking to a few colleagues of mine regarding heat transfer plates, I learned that this was actually not true and that the Joyce Track heat transfer plate is actually the most efficient choice because of the way that it holds on to heat. Today, I'd like to dive into why this is the better choice. Let's get started. When reading up on the Joyce Track speed tubing, they claim that the installation for radiant heating is greatly improved and the overall heat output is captured when compared to staple up and double groove aluminum plates. When reading up on Up Honor's Joyce Track website, they mentioned that the installation for radiant heating applications greatly improves the overall heat output. So the idea of a heat transfer plate is to generate heat through the flooring of your home. What is the Joyce Track? The Joyce Track is a four inch by four foot heat transfer plate made with a thicker aluminum. It's capable of a much higher output resulting in greater comfort and efficiency for radiant heating systems. Because of its build, it is able to radiate and store more heat than your standard staple up aluminum kind. Now, think of it this way. This is basically an old school radiator. You turn it on and it keeps that heat in. It holds on to it and gradually over time, the heat will dissipate. Now, if you're relating it to the staple up kind, this is more like comparing the radiator to a small electric heater. Within under hours, for certain, it'll cool off. I just want to show you, after doing some research, we kind of figured out how hot these generally get when they're underneath your floorboards versus the standard staple up kind. So as you could see here, this is the temperature reading that you'll normally get over the course of time as it dissipates. And this is what you'll get with the joist track. You can kind of see in the colors that are being presented in front of you. To install this guide, all you have to do is fasten it to your subfloor using the already included screw holes and then snapping your PEX or copper tubing into place. It's just that simple. Now, to determine the number of joist tracks that you might need, let's dive into that. Your first step in figuring out how many joist tracks you need is taking the net heated area and multiplying it by 1.5. Your second step is to take the length of heating tubing included, not including the supply and return, and multiplying it by 0.8. This will also include the bends. Your last step is to divide by four and then round to the next whole number. That will tell you the amount of joist track systems that you will need. If you are installing underfloor PEX heating, you should have a separate and dedicated hot water heater. This is because the underfloor heating operates at a much lower temperature range roughly around 95 to 114 degrees Fahrenheit. This is different from traditional hydronic heating systems. The heat source from the underfloor heating is usually con a condensed boiler or from a heat pump. Both are well matched for these lower operating temperatures to maximize boiler heating efficiency, which is what the point of these are. To install a separate gas-fired condensing hot water heater, you're normally gonna want water around 125 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you're using these, the cooler the water on the return, the much better it is for your boiler or your condensed heating system. So these will all not always be at the highest temperature of your water output. My last tip for these is when installing these or 
you know, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you're either cutting these with a blade or you've already received them, you're going to want to deburr the edges. And why is that? Well, you might actually create some damage to your PEX or copper tubing when installing in your floor. If you think I missed something or you have any questions or concerns regarding this video or an installation or a suggestion for us, leave a comment in the section below. And be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, everybody.